greetings and welcome. Today's lesson is this, Moonlit Waterfall. You see two of them right here, one, two. You see, it was another one of those lessons where I had this idea, this vision, and I wanted it to be just right. Now they're very close to each other, but when I finished the first one, I was like, I can, I can, I can see how to improve this. So I did it again, I recorded it again, and that is the lesson you are watching today. Now, as per usual, this is a cut up. If you want the full hour long lesson along with the digital sketch, those are available over on Patreon. If you sign up over on Patreon, you also get the back catalog of over 30 hour long lessons as well. They never expire, they never go away. You can always go back and rewatch them and you just have a, a really big portfolio with a lot of different ideas. So go check that out if you're interested. And on that kind of similar note, the book sale is still on. It is 25% off all of my books, Acrylics for Beginners, Painting Prompts, all of it. So go check that out in the link in the description as well. All of that being said, let's jump into today's lesson. I'm beginning here with a large square headed brush from Artist Loft. I'm ensuring that it's a little bit damp. Then I'm going to my palette, grabbing some primary blue, some titanium white, and a very small amount of Mars Black. Here I'm trying to mix a fairly desaturated darker blue for the sky. I'm using the white in there because I want it to mix with the black and render a gray which will desaturate the blue itself. Here we are beginning to apply that to our sky and initially I'm going to work around my moon. I'm not really being too consistent though. I'm allowing it to be a little bit rough. We can redraw on the moon if we have to and it isn't something that is going to make or break the painting. Then I'm going to grab a medium sized round headed brush. I'm going to take some titanium white, mix it with a bit of what we were just working on so that the color is similar, it's just lighter. And then I'm going to begin plotting in a couple of clouds. Here I'm starting at the bottom and working my base in, and then I'm going to expand upwards in varying streaks and lines. This is going to make the piece a little bit more dynamic and add some leading lines to our painting. Here I'm going back, grabbing more of that pigment, and I'm going to also apply it to where my moon is and the glow. So here you can see I'm working in a round motion. I'm just blending it outwards more and more, as you can see, and we're going to do a couple of layers with this. I'm not applying a lot of pure white initially. I'm going to do this in steps and stages just to ensure that I get the right mixture and it's not too bright. Now here I'm grabbing my smaller round headed brush because I want to do some more detail work and apply some stars. That's exactly what we're doing here. So I'm getting a good amount of water on my brush. I'm mixing it with pure titanium white paint and then I'm going to put it in front of my canvas, peel back the bristles and then launch the paint at the canvas. This renders just a myriad of stars, so many more than what we could have done by dabbing them on individually, and it makes them much smaller than what we would have been able to achieve with the brush individually as well. Now I'm going back to my palette, mixing a bit of a darker version of our pigments, and I'm creating an additional layer of clouds atop our initial ones. These are a little bit more transparent, and so the darker portions of the sky can show through them. I'm doing this because I want to create additional layering, I want to create additional levels, it will add a bit of depth, and something I always implore you to do is create different types of clouds. Now I'm going to take my smaller round-headed brush and begin to work on my mountains. As you can see, we are mixing more of a similar blue to what we initially had than I'm making it, just a little bit darker so it stands out. I'm applying this mixture to the bottom of my first mountain and I'm blending it upwards. I'm using more water to ensure that it blends a little bit better. Then I'm grabbing a lighter mixture than what we have in our sky and I'm applying that to the top of our mountain. So here we're taking a medium sized square headed brush ensuring that it is a little bit damp then we are going to take a mixture of our blues, a darker mixture than what we've used before. So I'm using a lot more Mars Black. And we're going to begin working on our second set of mountains. 
I'm beginning here as we did with the first one at the bottom of the mountain and then I'm just blending upwards. We're doing this and we're incorporating more black because the farther away something is in the painting, A, the more light it's going to receive from the moon, but B, the more reflective light that surrounds it. So the reflective light of the sky is blue. So the mountains in the far, far back should be the most blue. And then as we get closer to us, they get more of their natural colors. We get more of the grays, we get more of the browns, we get more of the greens from the trees on them. And we need a natural progression from there. The light from the moon will still heavily affect the edges, or at least the portions that catch the light. It won't catch the majority of it, but that's why right here we are applying that extra light portion. I'm applying it initially on the same edge as we did the mountain, and that's because that's the area that's going to get the most light. Now, it's important to note that you should let the blue layer dry completely before you move on to this next step. In this next step, however, we will be using an old square-headed brush, one where the bristles leaf off in varying directions, so when you make a dabbing motion with it, it renders a myriad of implications. Here, we're grabbing some primary yellow, mixing it into our blues, our blacks, our white, everything that we were using before, and we're trying to get a fairly desaturated, lighter green. We want something that will match the value and the saturation level of the mountain we are working on. And I'm beginning to do that with a tapping motion, as you can see. Then I'm grabbing a slightly lighter mixture, one with a little bit more titanium white, as you can see, and I'm applying that to the tops of our trees because the tops of the trees will be receiving more light than the bottom portions, and they will have that moonlight kind of hitting portions of them. Here, as you can see, we are just mixing more of a vibrant green. And if you want it to be more vibrant, um, you need to use less black and you need to use less white. So that's what we're doing here. The yellow itself is fairly bright, so we don't need to add a lot of the additional white in it. And that's a way we can ensure that we are building up the saturation as we move forward in the painting. Then I'm going to grab my medium-sized square-headed brush, some primary blue, some titanium white, and we're going to begin working on the pigment for our water. I'm grabbing a little bit of Mars Black as well, just to desaturate it a little bit. Then in horizontal strokes, I'm beginning to apply that water to our stream at the bottom here. Then I'm taking a bit of a brighter pigment. I just added some titanium white to our initial mixture, and I'm beginning to work in the highlight from the moon. I'm applying it in the same way that we did our initial water in horizontal strokes, and I'm trying to apply less pressure as we get towards each edge of each stroke. I want it to kind of dissipate. I want it to kind of blend off into the rest of the blue, into the rest of the water. And I just want to continue building up additional white and highlights in that middle portion. I'm going to take some burnt umber, some titanium white, mix those two together with my square headed brush, a little bit of Mars black to desaturate it, and then I'm going to begin applying the rock to the left-hand side of our painting, or rather the right-hand side of the painting. It can get confusing when you're watching it on camera because of course everything's flip inverted. Um, but we're throwing it over by our waterfall to be specific. Here I'm starting with the sharp edges as we have a lot of paint on our brush and I'm kind of moving it over towards the waterfall more and more. Here I'm getting a darker mixture to play with because as we get farther, farther into the rock, less light will be hitting it from the moon, especially not near the edge. And it'll also make the effect of the rock look much more 3D. I'm not working in diagonal lines or circular strokes because I want the rock to look hard. I want it to look like it's broken off into varying segments. Right now, it just looks very messy, and I understand that. We needed to build up the light side and the dark side, and then we can begin refining once we have that base. I'm also throwing this black here into the bottom of our mountain structure here because I want it to get a lot darker. I want the main highlight of the water to be at the top, 
and I'm being very messy in the areas of the water because I just want basic rock structures to show through. They don't need to be great, they don't need to be perfect, we are covering all of this with water, but I do want a bit, just a bit, of a harsh undertone so that you might see some of this through it and it'll look interesting. Then I'm going to grab the smaller round-headed brush, I'm going to get it a little bit damp, grab some more of our Mars Black, a little bit of primary blue, a little bit of primary yellow, mix those together to make a very dark green. Then I'm going to begin applying the foliage to our tree. I'm beginning at the top where it needs to be the sharpest and the most concise. Then we're slowly moving down the tree, expanding upon our branches and foliage. Here I'm creating a much lighter green and I'm going to begin applying this to the sides of the tree that the light from the moon will be hitting. I'm not creating a straight outline through the tree, I'm doing a bit of this in a tapping motion. I'm also kind of avoiding the bottom portions of a lot of these branches and I'm avoiding entire portions of the branches as well. So keep that in mind, as we get to the bottom it should dissipate a lot less light will be able to get through all of the foliage at the bottom, much like with our mountains. Here we're also creating a bit of a brown and we're going to throw in just a little bit of the tree branch underneath. I'm not doing this through the entirety of the tree, I'm picking a couple of areas where it will show through the foliage, but we're not doing it through all of it that's for sure because there is going to be a lot of foliage that is on top of it. For the next step, we are taking our old square headed brush, we are mixing a fairly saturated green, and we're getting to block in some of the foundations for where we want our new trees and our new foliage to be. I'm working it up and around some of the rock, as you can see some of the rock is still showing through in between varying portions of the foliage, that'll just make it a little bit more interesting. But then I'm going to take a little bit of a titanium white, a little bit of our primary yellow mix up a brighter pigment and begin to add the highlights to the tops of these trees. We are going to take our old square headed brushes, a good amount of water and some primary blue and begin to map in where we want our water to fall on our waterfall. The application as you can see is incredibly transparent and this is purposeful. We've been able to achieve this by using a lot of water and thinning out our paint and it's also achieved because we aren't using thicker paint pigments like titanium white or Mars black. A primary color like primary red, primary blue, primary yellow, they're all very thin pigments, they're all very transparent pigments. So if you want to just try a color, you want to try a wash like this, use a lot of water and a pure pigment. Here we're going to grab some titanium white, do a fairly even mixture between it and the primary blue and begin to work on the lighter areas of our water. This is going to thicken the pigment so you need to be careful with how much you use and where you use it. I'm generally beginning to use it at the tops of our waterfalls and then I'm blending it downwards as we go. So we're going to continue grabbing more titanium white and we're just going to build up this pigment predominantly at the top. Here I'm doing a bit of a tapping effect to show that the water is kind of rushing, it's uh, very messy at the top there, it's hitting different rocks and that sort of thing. But then when it starts to fall we are moving completely to a stroke motion. Then I'm going to use a tapping effect and begin to apply all of the crashing water here at the bottom. However, some of you will want your waterfalls to be a little bit larger than this, so I'll also show you how to do that and imply that the waterfall kind of just keeps on going. This is what you do if you want your waterfall to end at the bottom portion of the land here. We're going to take that same round-headed brush, get a lot of water on it to thin our white pigment well, apply it to the bottom right hand corner of our canvas and begin to work it upwards in a rounded motion. I'm also going to move over a lot of our splashing effect, softening it and turning it into fog. You can have both effects, you can have the splashing and the fog if you want, you just have to let the splashing effect 
fully dry first, but again, the splashing effect implies that the waterfall ends at that point, and I'd like it to be a little bit more ambiguous. I'd like to kind of imply that the waterfall could go on farther. So what I'm going to do is change all of that splashing effect into a fog. We are going to begin working on some foliage over on the right hand side of our painting. I'm using the smaller square headed brush. We are using a mixture of Mars black and primary yellow. Because we're working on top of the wet white, they are going to blend together and you are going to get more of a desaturated aesthetic. So I'm going to go back and grab a bit of a darker pigment yet again with the Mars black. I'm creating all of these individual little leaf shapes here with this square headed brush. It's a great brush for rendering individual leaves. I'm rendering openings in them. We're trying to create varying clusters of leaves in this process. Here as you can see we're now just moving over to Mars black and a little bit of our primary yellow to render our green. For the record, blue and yellow make green, but so do black and yellow as well. Then I'm going to take a brighter mixture using more of our primary blue, a lot of primary yellow, and a good amount of titanium white. I'm going to create a much lighter leaf color, and I'm going to begin tapping those on in the same way that we did the initial foundation layer with the darker pigments. I'm only really applying this new mixture to the left hand side and in the areas where the light from the moon will hit. Now I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to move back over to our waterfall. Here I'm using a very clean small square headed brush and I'm applying this to the tops of our waterfall. This is a pure titanium white. I'm creating these very specific, very sharp strokes. There's a good amount of water on my brush, and I'm just ensuring that the light from the moon catches the waterfall in a really beautiful way. There is one thing I wanted to really go back on and fix, and that is our rocks. So here I'm taking a mixture of burnt umber and titanium white, and I'm ensuring that we have a fairly sharp edge for the uh, far left hand side of our, of our rocks that are attached to our waterfall. Then I'm dragging them backwards a little bit towards the waterfall area. Then I'm creating a darker mixture, as you can see. It has burnt umber, it has Mars black, and I'm creating the opposite side. These are areas that the light isn't hitting. We're making our portions of our waterfall a little bit sharper. We're ensuring that they're a little bit more uh, three-dimensional. Hey there, it's Ryan O'Rourke. I truly hope you enjoyed today's little extra video. It was essentially a cut-up version of one of the many hour-long lessons which we offer over on Patreon.com. Over there, you'll also find digital sketches of the 10-minute painting lessons, digital sketches of these hour-long painting lessons, and a bunch of reference photos as well. So if any of that interests you, or if you just want to support Support the channel go over there and check it out it is a pleasure to make these long form videos and I love to share them with all of you so thank you so much for watching I will see you next Saturday with a new video and above all as always stay creative